helps against temptation. Thomas Brooks, 1608-1680, God will shortly tread down Satan under the saints' feet, Romans chapter 16 verse 20. Christ, our champion, hath already won the field and will shortly set our feet upon the necks of our spiritual enemies. Satan is a foiled adversary. Christ hath led him captive and triumphed over him upon the cross. Christ hath already overcome him and put weapons into your hands that you may overcome him also and set your feet upon his neck. Though Satan be a roaring lion, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, yet Christ, who is the lion of the tribe of Judah, Revelation chapter 5 verse 5, will make Satan flee and fall before you. Let Satan do his worst, yet you shall have the honor and the happiness to triumph over him. Cheer up, you precious sons of Sion, for the certainty and sweetness of victory will abundantly recompense you for all the pains you have taken in making resistance against Satan's temptations. The broken horns of Satan shall be trumpets of our triumph and the cornets of our joy. Oh, hath Satan so many devices to ensnare and undo the souls of men? How should this awaken dull, drowsy souls and make them stand upon their watch? A saint should be like a seraphim, beset all over with eyes and lights that he may avoid Satan's snares and stand fast in the hour of temptation. The Lord hath in the scripture discovered the several snares, plots, and devices that the devil hath to undo the souls of men, so that, being forewarned, they may be forearmed, that they may be always upon their watchtower and hold their weapons in their hands as the Jews did in Nehemiah's time, Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 17. Satan, out of malice to the souls of men, hideth his goods, his wares, as I may say, in the souls of men, and then goeth and accuseth them before the Lord. And a thousand, thousand other ways do Satan's malice, envy, and enmity put him upon, eternally to undo the precious souls of men. Satan is full of envy and enmity, and that makes him very studious to suit his snares and plots to the tempers, constitutions, fancies, and callings of men, so that he may make them as miserable as himself. He is a spirit of mighty abilities, and his abilities to lay snares before us are mightily increased by that long standing of his. He hath had time enough to study all those ways and methods that tend most to ensnare and undo the souls of men. And as he hath time enough, so he hath made it his whole study, his only study, his constant study, to find out snares, depths, and stratagems to entangle and overthrow the souls of men. When he was but a young serpent, he did easily deceive and outwit our first parents, Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 to 15. But now he is grown that, old serpent, as John speaks, Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. He is as old as the world and is grown very cunning by experience. If Satan hath such a world of devices and stratagems to ensnare and undo the souls of men, then, instead of wondering that so few are saved, sit down and wonder that any are saved, that any escape the snares of this cunning fowler who spreads his nets and casts forth his baits in all places, in all cases and companies. The first help. If you would not be taken by any of Satan's devices, then walk by rule, of the word. He that walks by rule, walks most safely. He that walks by rule, walks most honorably. He that walks by rule, walks most sweetly. When men throw off the word, then God throws them off. Then, Satan takes them by the hand and leads them into snares at his pleasure. He that thinks himself too good to be ruled by the word will be found too bad to be owned by God. And if God does not or will not own him, Satan will by his stratagems overthrow him. Them that keep to the rule shall be kept in the hour of temptation. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. The second help. As you would not be e taken with any of Satan's devices, take heed of vexing and grieving the Holy Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ that is best able to discover Satan's snares against us. Only he can point out all his plots, discover all his methods, and enable men to escape those pits that he hath digged for their precious souls. Ah, if you set that sweet and blessed spirit mourning, who alone can secure you from Satan's depths, by whom will you be secured? Man is a weak creature and no way able to discover Satan's snares nor to avoid them, unless the Spirit of the Lord gives skill and power. Therefore, whoever be grieved, be sure the Spirit be not grieved by your enormities, nor by your refusing the cordials and comforts that he sets before you, nor by slighting and despising his gracious actings in others, nor by calling sincerity hypocrisy, dot etc., nor by fathering those things upon the Spirit that are the brats and fruits of your own hearts. The Spirit of the Lord is your counselor, 
your comforter, your upholder, your strengthener. It is only the spirit that makes a man too great for Satan to conquer. Greater is he that is in you, than he that is in the world, 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. The third help. If you would not be taken with any of Satan's devices, then labor for more heavenly wisdom. Ah, souls, you are much in the dark. You have but a little wisdom to what others have and to what you might have had, had you not been lacking in yourselves. There are many knowing souls, but there are only a few wise souls. There is oftentimes a great deal of knowledge, where there is but a little wisdom to improve that knowledge. It is not the most knowing Christian, but the most wise Christian that sees, avoids, and escapes Satan's snares. The way of life is above to the wise, saith Solomon, that he may depart from hell beneath, Proverbs chapter 15 verse 24. Heavenly wisdom makes a man delight to fly high, and the higher any man flies, the more he is out of the reach of Satan's snares. Ah, souls, you had need of a great deal of heavenly wisdom to see where and how Satan lays his baits and snares. You need wisdom to find out proper remedies against his devices and wisdom to apply those remedies seasonably, inwardly, and effectually to your own hearts, so that you may avoid the snares, which that evil one hath laid for your precious souls. The fourth help. If you would not be taken with any of Satan's devices, then make present resistance against Satan's first motions. It is safe to resist, it is dangerous to dispute. Eve disputes and falls in paradise, Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 7. Job resists and conquers upon the dunghill. He that will play with Satan's bait will quickly be taken with Satan's hook. The promise of conquest is made over to resisting, not to disputing. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you, James chapter 4 verse 7. Ah, souls, were you better at resisting than at disputing? Your temptations would be fewer, and your strength to stand would be greater than it is now. The fifth help. If you would not be taken with any of Satan's devices, then labor to be filled with the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is a spirit of light and power, and what can a soul do without light and power, against spiritual wickedness in high places, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. It is not enough that you have the Spirit, but you must be filled with the Spirit, or else Satan, that evil spirit, will be too hard for you, and his plots will prosper against you. That is a sweet word of the Apostle, be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, i.e., labor for abundance of the Spirit. He that thinks he hath enough of the Holy Spirit will quickly find himself vanquished by the evil spirit. Satan hath his snares to take you in prosperity and adversity, in health and sickness, in strength and weakness, when you are alone and when you are in company, when you come on to spiritual duties and when you come off from spiritual duties. And, if you are not filled with the Spirit, Satan will be too hard and too crafty for you, will easily and frequently take you in his snares and make a prey of you despite your souls. Therefore, labor more to have your hearts filled with the Spirit than to have your heads filled with notions, your shops with wares, your chests with silver, or your bags with gold. In that way, you shall escape the snares of this fowler and triumph over all his plots. The sixth help. If you would not be taken in any of Satan's snares, then keep humble. A humble heart will rather lie in the dust than rise by wickedness and sooner part with all than the peace of a good conscience. Humility keeps the soul free from many darts of Satan's casting and snares of his spreading. The devil hath least power to fasten a temptation on him that is most humble. He that hath a gracious measure of humility is neither affected with Satan's offers nor terrified with his threatenings. God hath said that he will teach the humble, and that he will dwell with the humble, and that he will fill and satisfy the humble. And if the teachings of God, the indwellings of God, if the pourings in of God will not keep the soul from falling into Satan's snares, I do not know what will. Therefore, as you would be happy in resisting Satan and blessed in triumphing over Satan and all his snares, keep humble. I say again, keep humble. The seventh help. If you would not be taken in any of Satan's snares, then keep a strong, close, and constant watch. 1 Thessalonians 5-6. A secure soul is already an ensnared soul. That soul that will not watch against temptations will certainly fall before the power of temptations. Satan works most strongly on the imagination when the soul is drowsy. The soul's security is Satan's opportunity to fall upon the soul and to spoil it, as Joshua did the men of Ai. The best way to be safe and secure from all Satan's assaults is, with Nehemiah and the Jews, to watch and pray and to pray and watch. By this means, they became too hard for their enemies, and the work of the Lord did prosper sweetly in their hands.
Remember how Christ rebuked his sluggish disciples. What, could ye not watch with me one hour? Matthew chapter 26 verse 40. What, cannot you watch with me? How will you then die with me? If you cannot endure words, how will you endure wounds? Satan always keeps a crafty and malicious watch, seeking whom he may devour, or whom he may drink or sip up, as the apostle speaks in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Satan is very envious of our condition that we should enjoy that paradise out of which he is cast, and out of which he shall be forever kept. Shall Satan keep a crafty watch, and shall not Christians keep a holy spiritual watch? Our whole life is beset with temptations. Satan watches all opportunities to break our peace, to wound our consciences, to lessen our comforts, to impair our graces, to slur our evidences, and to damp our assurances, etc. Oh, what need, then, have we to be always upon our watchtower? lest we be surprised by this subtle serpent. Watchfulness includes a waking, a rousing up of the soul. It is a continual, careful observing of our hearts and ways in all the turnings of our lives, so that we keep close to God and His Word. Watchfulness is nothing else but the soul running up and down, to and fro, busy everywhere. It is the heart busied and employed with diligent observation of what comes from within us and of what comes from without us and into us. Ah, souls! You are no longer safe and say cure than when you are upon your watch. The eighth help. If you would not be taken with any of Satan's snares and devices, then keep up your communion with God. Your strength to stand and withstand Satan's fiery darts is from your communion with God. A soul high in communion with God may be tempted but will not easily be conquered. Such a soul will fight it out to the death. Communion with God furnisheth the soul with the greatest and the choicest arguments to withstand Satan's temptations. Communion is the result of union. Communion is a reciprocal exchange between Christ and a gracious soul. Communion is Jacob's ladder, where you have Christ sweetly coming down into the soul, and the soul, by divine influences, sweetly ascending to Christ. Communion with Christ is very inflaming, raising, and strengthening. While Samson kept up his communion with God, no enemy could stand before him, but he goes on conquering and to conquer but when he was fallen in his communion with God, he quickly falls before the plots of his enemies. It will be so with your souls. So long as your communion with God is kept up, you will be too hard for spiritual wickedness in high places, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. But if you fall from your communion with God, you will, as others do, fall before the face of every temptation. David stands and triumphs over all his enemies so long as he kept up his communion with God, but when he was fallen in his communion with God, then he falls before the enemies that were in his own bosom and flies before those that pursued after his life. It will be so with your souls if you do not keep up your communion with God. Job keeps up his communion with God and conquers Satan upon the dunghill. Adam loses his communion with God and is conquered by Satan in paradise. Communion with God is a shield upon land, as well as an anchor at sea. It is a sword to defend you, as well as a staff to support you, therefore, keep up your communion. The ninth help. If you would not be taken in any of Satan's snares, then engage not against Satan in your own strength, but be every day drawing new virtue and strength from the Lord Jesus. Certainly, that soul that engages against any old or new temptation without new strength, new influences from on high, will fall before the power of the temptation. You may see this in Peter. He rested upon some old received strength. Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Matthew chapter 26 verse 35. Therefore, he falls sadly before a new temptation. He curses, swears, and denies him thrice that had thrice appeared gloriously to him. Ah, souls, when the snare is spread, look up to Jesus Christ, who is lifted up in the gospel as the brazen serpent was in the wilderness, Numbers chapter 21 verse 9, and say to him, Dear Lord, here is a new snare laid to catch my soul, and grace formerly received, without fresh supplies from thy blessed bosom, will not deliver me from this snare. Oh, give me new strength, new power, new influences, new measures of grace, so that I may escape the snares. Ah, souls, remember this, that your strength to stand and overcome must not be expected from graces received, but from the fresh and renewed influences of heaven. You must lean more upon Christ than upon your duties. You must lean more upon Christ than upon spiritual tastes and discoveries. You must lean more upon Christ than upon your graces, or else Satan will lead you into captivity. The tenth help. If you would not be taken in any of Satan's snares, then be much in prayer. Prayer is a shelter to the soul, 
a sacrifice to God, and a scourge to the devil. David's heart was oft more out of tune than his harp. He prays, and then, despite the devil, cries, Return unto thy rest, O my soul. Prayer is the gate of heaven, a key to let us into paradise. There is nothing like prayer that renders plots fruitless. Therefore, saith Christ, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation, Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. You must watch and pray, and pray and watch, if you would not enter temptation. When Sennacherib and Haman had laid plots and snares to have destroyed the Jews, they prayed, and their souls were delivered, and Sennacherib and Haman destroyed. David had many snares laid for him, and this puts him upon prayer. Keep me, saith he, from the snares which they have laid for me, and the gins of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, whilst that I escape, Psalms 141-9-10. The proud, saith he, have hid a snare for me, and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside, they have set gins for me. Salah. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord, Psalms 140-5-6. Saul and many others had laid snares for David, and this put him upon prayer. By this way, the snares were broken, and he was delivered. Ah, souls, take words to yourselves and tell God that Satan hath spread his snares in all places and in all companies. Tell God that he digs deep, and that he hath plot upon plot, and device upon device, and all to undo you. Tell God that you have neither skill nor power to escape his snares. Tell God that it is a work too high and too hard for any created creature to work your deliverance unless he put under his own everlasting arms. Tell God how his honor is engaged to stand by you and to bring you off that you be not ruined by his plots. Tell God how the wicked would triumph if you should fall into Satan's snares. Tell God of the love of Christ, of the blood of Christ, and of the intercession of Christ for you that a way may be found for your escape. Tell God if he will make it his honor to save you from falling into Satan's snares, you will make it your glory to speak of his goodness and to live out his kindness. Christians must escape by a way of heaven, that is, the way of prayer, which is the only way left to escape Satan's snares. From the Complete Works of Thomas Brooks, ed. A. B. Grozart, Volume 1, Edinburgh, London, Dublin, James Nicoll, James Nisbet and Company, G. Herbert, 1866, 157, in the public domain.